Hello and welcome to this video. The purpose of this video is to give a look at the different fuel elements for the Bosch M pumps that Bosch built for Mercedes Benz back in the 80s and 90s, mostly for the OM60X series of engines like the 601, 2, 3, uh, 5, and 6, OM606 to OM601, and also the OM617 with the M pump. So we're going to talk a little bit left to right um, about all these different elements. I'll explain what the paper means, a little bit about the elements, companies that built them, a little bit about their history. I don't want to go too much into depth because I'm not the most knowledgeable, but I am going to share what I know in the most unbiased way as possible. This is not a video to say this is better than that and blah, blah, blah. It's strictly to be informative to the best of my ability and what I know after having used these different elements to build injection pumps. So uh, over here, these first three are Bosch elements. And we'll look a little bit here. We'll use this six millimeter just to kind of give you a, a closer look at what these elements look like. So they have a slot that runs vertical, a diagonal one, which is called a helix, and then at the top, this little slot up here, um, this little slot here, you can see at the top, not the dot, but the diagonal one right here above my thumb, this right here is called a retard notch. Okay, put this one back here. So these first ones over here are Bosch elements, the originals. They started off with a 5.5 millimeter, and this is what the mechanical injection pumps came with. So 5.5 is the diameter of this part of the element, which is called the barrel, and this is a plunger. So 5.5 millimeter, uh, these factory, I want to say the pumps that use these were somewhere around 55 cc's of fuel, so not a whole lot. Um, the basic design of them, as I showed you on the back of them, they have this F figure, which is, sorry, this F, which is uh, for oil cooling, and they also have this slot on them. Top, they have that little dot. I don't know if that serves any purpose or if it's just for machining. Um, okay. So 5.5, that's what the... The original, uh, like the 601, 602, and 603 came with, and also the, the 617 M pumps. Next, there are EDC pumps. Now, EDC pumps have 6 millimeter elements, but if your engine was a turbo or a naturally aspirated, the elements themselves are different. Uh, they might look the same. The main difference is a retard slot, which is what I just told you, showed you, sorry. You can see this one, hopefully you can see, does not have a retard notch, whereas this one does. It's very, very, very tiny, but you can see it right there at the top. So I just bring this up so that you can be sure that if you're looking for elements yourself, that you don't just grab an EDC pump because there are EDC pumps with six millimeter elements that don't have that. And if you don't have a retard notch, uh, what's going to happen is it's not going to work very well with your turbo. So there's those, the original Bosch, the ones that started it all. Next in line is Mina. Mina is a Finnish company, in other words, out of Finland. And they are one of, I believe, the first company. I say that because um, there's, a comp there's a, I don't know if it's a company or a guy, I'm not the best history buff, but Harlevi, Harlevi, I don't know how you pronounce it in Finnish, but... He came out with the seven millimeter element, which basically was this, the EDC six millimeter, but blown up to the seven millimeter. And what he got was basically like a tractor pulling element. It gave you all or nothing. It gave you all your fuel or no fuel. And it was just very harsh. Mina perfected that. They came out with their own element. You can see that it's not much like the six millimeter EDC over here. Okay, side by slide, quite a 
quite different. Um, they obviously have a retard notch up there at the top, but what makes theirs great is the helix angle, which is this one that's diagonal. You can see it's cut double. So you can see there's one like right here and then there's one back here. And it starts here and ends wider. This slot down here, uh, if you ask people, most of them will say, well, it's not really a necessary slot. It doesn't do a whole lot. It's kind of just something that makes machining easier, but we'll basically ignore that. So that's what makes their element really great. It's a seven millimeter. And they were the first ones that basically came out with an aftermarket great working element. Uh, this element is capable of about 170 cc's. And another thing is up here on the barrel. Uh, I didn't look very much at those, but they're all kind of similar. The hole looks really big, but it's chamfered and the actual hole inside is not that big. Okay, Nina um, also kept the chamfered hole on the barrel. After that was Dieselmecken. Dieselmecken is Swedish, and they also came out with their own element after Mina. They made theirs into 7.5. I believe the 7.5 was their first. They did that before the 8 millimeter, as far as I know. And you can see their element is called 75L3. 7.5 meaning 7.5, the L, I don't know what it stands for, 3 meaning this is the third revision. Same thing with Mina, Mina Diesel 7.0, which is a 7.0-5, 5 is the fifth revision. So it took them five tries to get to this element that they sell nowadays. And diesel mechan, if you ask for a 7.5 millimeter diesel mechan element, this is what you'll get, is a 7.5 L3. So they came after Mina and built their own elements as well. Next is a 7.7. .7. You can tell we're going in order of size, right? So in the, this is where I gotta be careful not to offend either side, but back in, I don't know how long ago, 10 years ago or something, um, Diesel Pump UK was reselling Diesel Mechan pumps. And I don't know if there was a disagreement or what happened. Once again, I'm not here to pick sides or say this is wrong, that's right, but some disagreement happened and Diesel Pump UK decided to increase the size of the 7503 to 7.7 and use it. If you look at the two, they're identical. They can correct me if I'm wrong, but to the simple eye, there's nothing different about them. They both have the same features. They don't like the rest of these. They don't have this oil cooling groove right here because theirs is, they put it inside of the barrel. Okay, so that covers the 7.5 and the 7.7. .7. Both of those also do about 170 cc. Um, these numbers that I'm telling you are kind of the basics. You can increase rack travel and do other modifications to get more fuel. That's what I was saying about the, the six millimeter elements. They're generally good for about 90 cc. People can squeeze 110, 120, but we don't recommend that after six millimeter or after 90 cc's, the fuel is just really not usable because of how small the element is. You can think about it, um, how long it takes for that amount of fuel to get pushed in through that small hole into your engine, right? So you have a very long injection duration. So if you're planning on making big fuel, or sorry, you need big fuel to make big power, uh, you want a larger element because you're going to have a shorter injection angle. So we've covered those. Next is the Benz Injection BI-80. So this is our own element that we came out with and our idea behind it was not to do what's already out there because there already are really great elements but what we wanted was a element 
that was similarly smooth to the 6mm Bosch EDC turbo element, but like I just uh, discussed with the injection duration, we wanted something with a much shorter injection duration to get your fuel injected into your cylinder much faster, which gives you a cleaner burn, lowers EGTs, it's more efficient. In other words, you can make more power with less fuel. So CCs is kind of like boost. It's not just a number, right? Um, 90 CCs on a six millimeter element is gonna be quite different from 90 cc's on an 8 millimeter element. So that was our idea. Uh, we kept the oil cooling groove. We also did on the back, we did the, sorry, we did the, the F for the cooling mod. Um, we'll look a little bit later into the inlet holes on these. Um, Kind of explain that a little bit also but that was what we tried for um, the code on it is bi which just stands for benz injection and then eight because it's an eight millimeter and e e is the fifth letter of the alphabet and it was our uh, fifth try basically we had to go through five revisions in order to get this one uh, this right here my hand is one of the one of the prior versions you can see it's not marked um, but we didn't like it Especially the, the machining on it, you can see it's really rough. And But uh, nonetheless, this was, I believe, our third or our fourth revision of the element. Um, let's see a little bit about the top. Anyways, so that's our element. Um, it also, with the same um, injection pump settings, puts out about 170 cc. So our goal with it was not to create maximum fuel because if we want max fuel, there's already really good elements made for that. We just wanted a shorter injection angle element that is really, really smooth, like the six millimeter, but gives more power. So that's the idea behind uh, our element. Next is the Dieselmechan 80LF4 and 80LF. So these elements, you can see from the name, they're very similar. Um, the 80LF is the first revision of the element and then the ADLF4 is after that. Um, what I understand on the difference, if you order an eight millimeter uh, pump from us or from Dieselmechan or anybody that sells Dieselmechan, um, you're gonna get an ADLF4. The reason behind that is because it can make about 200 cc's of fuel with, um, I think you need two or three bar of fuel pressure they'll have to correct me but um and it's a good element the adlf4 the reason why they discontinued it is because you need really high fuel pressure to get fuel cc's but the adlf can make more fuel in other words if you have a really strong let's say a bosch 044 lift pump the adlf is going to give you more fuel with the same amount of rack travel versus the LF4. All these comparisons that I've given you are with the same amount of rack travel, and we'll show you what that means later. Uh, so that takes care of the two Dieselmechan eight millimeter elements. And last, Mina, they're eight millimeter, and you can see MD80-4, so the fourth revision. And this, you can see, also has the double helix so from uh, just looking at the eight millimeter and the seven millimeter MENA elements, they're pretty much identical. It's just the size, right? This element, if uh, you believe it or not, has the capability of up to 250 cc's. Really, really high, tons of fuel. Um, here's a little look at it. So if you just want all out the most amount of fuel that you can, go with that. That's kind of why our element, it's not about fuel because why would you bother when you can get an element that's already made? It works really, really well. Super short injection angle. It can do 250 cc's. Now, an honorary mention, one that's not here, is the 8.5 element. Um, it's currently being used by Diesel Pump UK.
the same company over here that does a 7.7. .7. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it. I, from what I understand is there's a German guy named uh, Topnik and he had this idea for this element and I don't know if he was having trouble producing it or what happened, but he and Diesel Pump UK got an agreement and now Diesel Pump UK uses that element. So it's 8.5, so it's bigger than both of these. Um, we don't have them, we've never used them. I don't know the maximum fuel on those. You would think since it's an 8.5, it would be a lot of fuel. Um, but the pumps that I have seen from Diesel Pump UK with the 8.5, uh, they all have marked on them about 200, 210 cc. So as far as I know, the MENA element um, is the winner as far as how much fuel you can produce between all of these. Um, so that's a little bit about each one. I'll do some close-ups here so you can kind of see. There you can see the, the double helix angle on the spot. The inlet size, kind of hard to see because it's black, but it, it's um, chamfered. Okay, that's something interesting about both of the decent mechanical elements is that theirs are not the chamfered or chamfered? I don't even know how to pronounce that word. Um, sorry. There's a look at those. The barrels, there's not really much to them. All the barrels are pretty much the same. They all have an inlet hole. They all have a groove over here for installing. And then on the back side, they all have the smaller hole, which is the outlet. There's no sense in really going over all of them. And then also the back side of all these elements are pretty much identical. They're pretty much all just flat. If they have the oil cooling groove on the barrel, um, all these ones right here have the F on the back, which is for oil cooling. There's nothing really much going, really not really much else going on on the back of them. You can see ours uh, right here on the back. It also has the F for the cooling mod. That's one of the things that we we change. Like you can see this on the the sample that I showed you. It has a really small F. We wanted a bigger one to help with the oil cooling. Um, trying to think what else I need to share. Ours has a chamfer. The diesel pump UK, that is one thing that they changed about their 7.7 is they did a chamfer. Probably should have looked up how to pronounce that word before making a video about it. Sorry guys, I speak Spanish and English and sometimes one is better than the other. Here's the Mina, they also have the chamfer. And then all of the Bosch elements have the chamfer. So there's a look at it. Um, very cool that there's this many variations of all of the different elements out there. So what we're going to do next is we're going to pick out some of these elements. We're going to install them in an injection pump, and then we're going to put it on the test bench so that we can see how they perform. We can see things like injection duration and fuel quantities with different amounts of rack travel. So this will give us a better idea of how they all compare to each other. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.